Do you use kind of AI, ChatGPT, etc., much? And, and are you seeing that kind of obviously increasing over over time? Yeah. So I use ChatGPT like at my job. I use it every day. It's a very good tool. It's kind of replaced my Google searches of how to do different stuff in code, right? Because it's it's a little bit better at actually understanding what I want. Mm. Um, ChatGPT, yeah, I love I love it. It's it's like right probably 75% of the time, then like 15% of the time, it's kind of right. And then the other 10% of the time, it's just completely wrong. So <laughs> kind of have to learn how to interpret what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of cool AI tools that are coming out. We're still kind of in like these early stages of AI where, you know, it's basically all kind of the same, like, but just a little bit different, you know? Yeah. But I think ChatGPT is really one that I really have enjoyed using. And I think, um, if you're, especially if you're learning to code, I think it's a really great tool in helping you understand what the code's doing, uh, or in helping you even write code and uh, being better at your code writing. So, yeah, definitely. So that was one thing I wanted to ask you about G chat GPT specifically, McKay. So you did a Substack post on that. I don't know if you've got this to hand or if you can remember it much. Um, um uh, yeah, I have it right here actually. Perfect. So if you, so just kind of. You mentioned right at the start of this, so uh, most people in the data world are just basically using ChatGPT wrong. Um, they use it for simple tasks, but it can do kind of so much more is the, is the overview kind of preface of that. But if we can just kind of go, maybe if, you, if you've got it up there, okay, kind of a little bit more on, because it breaks it down to trick one, trick two, trick three. So kind of a little bit around that, if you if you can share, share a bit more, McKay. Yeah, once, okay, sorry, I had to pull it up. It was like hidden behind my uh, camera. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, so the first trick and something I posted about, um, quite a bit is learning SQL with chat GPT. So, you know, that queer database querying language, it's like I mentioned before, it's very easy to learn, but it's difficult to master. Yeah. And sometimes it can be also a very tedious language of just like, oh, if I would have changed one thing, then my database would be 10 X faster or something. Right. So mm -hmm. chat GPT with learning SQL and learning and Actually, optimizing SQL is definitely one of my favorite use cases. Um, you can basically just plug in like your whole SQL query and say like, okay, how do I make this faster? How do I make this better? Yeah. Um, how do I, you know, how can I optimize this so that I'm getting max benefit, right? Um, number two, I actually use this a ton as well, but ChatGPT can now like browse the web. So it actually has factual data it's not just data up to like 2023 or whatever of april yeah. right so it's not just data up till april so you can actually start browsing the web um and i use this a lot in coding when i'm using a completely new package like say i didn't know anything about ggplot2 that i'd mentioned that we had talked about before yeah. um i probably would use chat gpt to go and read the documentation so i can just like plug in their website yeah, yeah. And I'm like, hey, here's this documentation. I need to create a bar chart um, based on this documentation. How can I do it? And it'll kind of go parse it out. And I mean, it should already know, I mean, something of that yeah. you know, yeah. level. But if it was something that is a new feature, or like a new addition to a package or, you know, a new technology, it's definitely uh, very good for that. Yeah. Um, and then the third one I use. So the third trick I talked about was using it to like kind of automate and speed up really repetitive tasks. Yeah. So in data science and data anal, you know, and data analysts, there's a step called um, exploratory data analysis, where basically you're just creating a bunch of graphs and, you know, running a couple of statistical tests to kind of understand, you know, the distribution of your data. Are there any outliers? Um, just kind of see what your data looks like and better understand your data. Yeah. If you're doing that every single time, it gets pretty repetitive and it gets pretty tedious, really time consuming yeah. uh, for every different data set you're working on. But if you are using ChatGPT, you can just be like, hey, here's my data. You can upload your CSV file, right? Um, obviously, if you're like querying from a bunch of data from a database, this might not work. But if it's like just a CSV file with like a couple hundred thousand rows or something, then you can upload that and it'll start creating graphs for you. And then you can mostly skip like having to write custom code for all these different data sets. So nice. um, I definitely like using it. It's definitely sped up my productivity and kind of, you know, what I, how quick I am and better understanding my data as well.
Nice, perfect. So one thing you mentioned earlier on in the in the conversation, McKay, was uh, GitHub Copilot. So can you just mm -hmm. kind of explain a little bit more on, on that if you can? Yeah, so GitHub Copilot, um, it's a tool from GitHub, which it, you know, just allows you to share code and like have version control over your code. But they've released this tool that just integrates into your like Python development. I mean, it works with every language basically, but every coding language, but it essentially allows you to, as you're typing, it's kind of like an autocomplete. Okay. Uh, or you can like write a comment and just be like, I need to have code that does X, but has Y, you know, like specification. And then usually it's pretty good at getting uh, what you need in that code. And it'll kind of just write blocks of code for you. Um, there are sometimes, you know, with all AI tools, it's not 100% correct. So you have to be a little weary about mm -hmm. what it's trying to run. But it's get, it's gotten a lot better over the past year. Um, and it's really good for helping you write code that may be pretty repetitive at times. Like if you're trying to uh, do the same thing just a couple of times, if you just say in like a comment, like, hey, I need to do this three times, it'll just write the code for you. So it's pretty cool.